In this video, I want to talk to you about contributing to open source. And you hear me say all the time, contributing to open source is not just about code, it's about testing, documentation, translation. There's 101 things you can do. It's about adding value. But in this video, I want to focus on automated testing. And you may think, oh, I don't know some of those technologies that are used in the automated testing. Well, if you look behind me, this way, not that way. Look behind me this way. Automated testing is sometimes written in English depending on what libraries you're using. So in this case, we're using Cypress with Cucumber. You probably see a lot of red below in the terminal. And actually the value comes from failing test. Yes, you heard that correctly, from failing test. If a test is always green, then I do worry that maybe it isn't doing a check properly. And I have seen that before. And if a test is always green, it gives you a false sense of security. And it is important to see it go red. That's why test-driven development is so important because you write the test first and then you see it red and then you make it go green by writing the code. So in this situation, the code has already been written, but we can still check that the test goes red by making it incorrect. Let me quickly show you. If I clear my terminal, what we do, we're using these tests on the link-free project. And if you haven't seen the link-free project yet, it's like Linktree, but the open source version. So here is my profile and I've got my links and then my Polyworks kind of style underneath. You've probably seen this before in one of my other videos. I actually built this on a video so you can go check that out. So this test here, I've got three scenarios in this test and what it's checking is that you can get to my profile from the home page. Also we're going directly to the user's profile and then we're checking the links. So I'm just going to run this and show you. So if I run this, you'll see that the last scenario will fail. So now it's running this, it's driving the browser, Cypress is doing that, and we're doing that in plain English with Cucumber. So if we go back to the terminal, we can see it running, and we'll see some green, and then we will see some red, and the red will say that one of the tests is failing, and then we can fix that either by fixing the code or by updating the test. And you'll know what to do because the test will tell you what is wrong. So let's have a look. There we go, we have a failing test and it says the user feature has failed. So we can scroll up and go have a look at actually what is failing. So here it is, it says the assertion couldn't find follow me on Edihub. And so if we go look in the browser, there is no follow me on Edihub, there's follow me on GitHub. So if I change this test back to follow me on GitHub and run it again, it will now go green. So we either know that something's wrong in the code or something is wrong in the test, they don't match up. And remember, we're not trying to test the libraries or frameworks or tools we use, we wanna test our code to make sure that things do work. And if you get a bug, before you fix it, write a test for it that will fail. But when you fix the bug, it will go green. And you may think, well, what's the advantage of that? The advantage is the bug will never resurface again because if someone changes any code that affects that area that could cause that bug, then the test will fail before they commit and push. And if they do commit and push, then CI, like GitHub Actions, will pick up on that and then they'll know something's wrong so it won't get merged in. There'll be a failing CI, there'll be a failing GitHub Action which will correspond to a failing test. Now you can see that it's all green. So how did I write this? And why is it important for open source? Well, open source projects iterate so fast and you want to do little and often and the smaller your pull request that adds value will get merged in quicker and can add value to the project and the community. You hear me say that all the time. But so many open source projects and so many client projects and projects that are private and projects that are out there in the world are missing automated testing. And you can add so much value by doing that. So let's write these automated tests together. So this is the original test, this is how it was. And you can see it's already got some tests. So the way Cucumber works is, this is the feature file, so we're gonna be checking the features on the user profile page. You can write whatever you want there, it has no action, it's more for information, because you can generate different reports and different output from the test suite. And then again here, this is again, more for information or any actions. Then this is the scenario we wanna test. So you do wanna keep them quite focused. 
So the scenario that we want to test is navigating to the user's page. And this exists already. I want to take you through it. And then we're going to add two more scenarios. And I really look forward to you looking at these tests and improving them, adding more scenarios as well. So here we say given. So the structure of a cucumber test is given, when, then. So given certain situation, when I perform certain action, then I expect a certain outcome. So here we go, given I'm on the homepage, uh, then I see the Eddie Jowd as a link. So if we go to the browser, we can actually follow through these steps ourselves. So if we go to the browser, you see Eddie Jowd as a link. And so Eddie Jowd should be alphabetical. So it's somewhere here. There we go. So you see this as a link. And then it'll say when I click on Eddie Jowd, so we can click on that, then I should see Eddie Jowd in the URL. And again, Eddie Jowd in the URL. So again, that should work successfully. And I see Eddie Jowd text in the section H1, and that will be this section. So if we did an inspect, this would be a H1. So you could right click, you could do an inspect, and we can see it's a H1. So you can get very specific in your testing, but it does become more brittle. So it's finding that boundary without being too specific, but being specific enough to add value. And that just comes with experience and practice, and every project is different depending on how often things change. So we know that test passed that was already there. So let's write another one. So what we need to do is write Right scenario. So in this scenario, we want to check that can I go directly to the user's link rather than clicking on the homepage? Because when people in their Twitter profile, Instagram profile want to share this link, we want to make sure it works. So we can say the scenario is going directly to a user's profile. And again, this part actually has no action. So first of all, we want to say given I open Eddie Jowd page. So here we want to check that we can go directly to my URL. Then very similar to before, we want to say, then I see Eddie Jowd in the URL, because we want to make sure it hasn't redirected, it hasn't changed. And we actually have a test for a 404 to make sure certain things happen as well. So we do want to check boundary conditions as well as the happy paths that work. And again, we can check that Eddie Jowd appears in the H1. So we can just copy and paste this from above because it's going to be exactly the same. We don't need to do all the checks that are in the previous section, but I do want to do one or two checks just to make sure that the page has loaded correctly. The URL's there and the data's loading. And it, what you'll notice from the terminal is it also records videos and screenshots. So it's great when it's running on CI, like you have actions and it's headless and you can't see the browser being driven and things being clicked on and navigated around. It is great to see that there is a screenshot of that there's a failing test. Well, why did it fail? And even sometimes a screenshot isn't enough. So Cypress records a video of that test so you can see how it got there. Because if an exception is thrown or there's a redirect that happens, then you might see the screenshot says it's on a different page, but you think, how did it get there? My test wasn't going to that page. Whereas if you can see a video of what happens, maybe an error message was displayed and then the redirect happened or something happened like that afterwards. So that is super helpful. So make sure on CI, you do save those assets so you can go back and have a look at those when things do fail. As you can see, that has gone green. So let's put a third test in and then I'm gonna leave more tests for you to do. So at the moment, we're only testing the title and the URL by clicking from the home page to get to this page and by going directly to the URL. So maybe we should check that some of the links do appear on the page for my profile. If it works for my profile, it's gonna work for someone else's profile because it's the same page and the same logic. I'll do this and then I'm gonna let you do another test to check for the milestones underneath. You could check that started freelancing has the date of 2010, for example. So this scenario is gonna be do the links appear on my profile. So check links appear on user profile. And then here we're gonna say given I open Eddie Jowd page. And we don't need to do any of these checks that I see Eddie Jowd in the URL. We don't need to do any of that. We know that works already. So here, here we can go straight away and check that these links appear on my profile, keeping the scenario quite specific. And I see, so let's have a look. What should we see? Follow me on GitHub. Follow me on GitHub. So here we're going to check that this appears in the button section. I don't need to be specific. I could probably put a GitHub tag on that to check it's appearing on the GitHub one. But as long as it appears as a button, I think that's fine. I could also do some checks for the link. I can even click on the link and make sure it goes to GitHub. So there are extra checks you can do. So feel free to add those tests as well to the project. I might just do one more. Let's do an and 
follow me on Twitter. Is there a follow me on Twitter? There is a follow me on Twitter. So thank you very much, Copilot. That was really helpful. Hit save. Let me run these tests again. And don't forget, these will run on GitHub Actions on RCI as well. But I do always run it locally before I commit and push. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm always keen to answer them. And it really helps support the channel if you leave a comment. While you're down there, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. What do you think of automated testing? Do you write automated tests? It is not that hard, but it's not that easy. Once you get started, you will see that you kind of get started with Hello World and then you can do so much more and you can get deeper and deeper into it. A bit just like with coding, a bit like with anything in tech, really. So I highly recommend getting started. There are different projects and libraries and tools that you can use for automated testing. Try them all, try Hello World and all of them and see which ones you like. Some are focused on unit testing, some are focused on end-to-end -end testing or something in between like integration. So do have a look and see which one suits your projects better and which ones you think you'll use more. There we go, all green. I'm not gonna make this test fail because I know you've seen it fail already at the beginning of the video. I showed it to you failing. So I really help, this sparks your interest in testing. This is how you can go from being more, I don't like the word junior, but I suppose less experienced to being more senior. You're gonna hate that terminology, but being more attractive to companies and clients to look at your work. Testing and automated testing is super important. I would rather see a project have six features that work that are bulletproof rather than 10 features where half the features don't work properly and are quite buggy and don't work in certain situations and so forth. So it's really, really important to make sure you do features that are of higher quality. Don't forget to come geek out with us in Discord so we can chat between videos and live stream. Link in the description below.